Hi friends, this is Anna Hellman with Scrapping, Stamping and Stuff. And I'm here today to share a really exciting new tool coming from Stampin' Up. These will be available beginning on January 5th of 2021 with our new January through June mini catalog that will be coming out. So I got a preview of them. One of the benefits of being a demonstrator is being able to see and order our products early. I've been playing with these and I absolutely love them. So I wanted to get a video put together to share everything I have learned so far about our blending brushes. So I really have a lot of information to share here over the next few minutes about these brushes with you. So let's talk about what they are first. These are a high quality blending tool to use instead of sponges. So if you've still been blending with sponges, you are going to love what I'm going to share with you today about the improvements you can get in your on your projects using these brushes instead of sponges. So the features of these brushes, they have a sturdy, flexible handle. Here you can see I can flex it. They have a really large head and I really like how large they are. They're over an inch wide and they're over an inch and a half tall. So you really can cover a lot of area with these brushes. They have tightly packed, very fine and soft bristles. And because they're so soft and fine, they give a really soft touch to applying that ink to your project, which leads to a really nice blend. They do come three to a pack. So I have my three brushes here I got in my very first pack. So you can order one pack, or if you love these, you may decide you went, may want to order several packs of them. So the benefits of using these, I have mentioned this already but you get such a beautiful, soft, and well-blended color on your projects. You can also use them for lots of techniques. So towards the end of my video, I'm going to share several different ways to use them, and I'll give, give you some more specifics then. So let's talk first about how to use these brushes, and then we will talk about a few extra tips some storage information and how to clean them. So I'll bring in some white cardstock here. This is what I'm going to blend on. This is a brush I've already used a few times. And here I am going to use some Poppy Parade ink. This is cleaned out, I will mention that, it's Poppy Parade ink. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your ink pad is clean. I had, occasionally my ink pads get little bits of lint and things collected on them. You don't want, you don't want little bits of lint or anything on your ink pads because these will pick them up and then you will not get that perfect blend on your project. So make sure your ink pad is clean and then you are going to apply the brush to the pad with a swirling motion and you want to blot the extra off on some your, your work surface or some scrap paper. And then you're going to come into your project using that swirling motion. And you will repeat this several times, maybe a lot of times, to get the look that you want. And I'm going to mention this. I had cleaned this brush off before I started, and it's a little bit damp. So I am not getting quite the look I want. I'm going to start with a fresh one that is dry and show you the difference. So actually, let's start over on this side. And this can, this can be a learning experience. So here... I am going to get the look I want because my brush is dry. So swirl on the pad, swirl a little bit on your work surface, your scrap paper or your work surface, if it's something besides scrap paper, and you're going to start applying that color and look how beautiful that is. So as you play around with this, you can try out adding more color to your brush, such as pressing harder when you are inking it. You can play around with the pressure you apply as you're sponging. But I find that I get the best look when I use this swirling motion. And as you can tell, I am holding 
the brush way up here by the head of it. You could hold it back here if you want, but I think you're going to have to work harder to get the effect you want. By holding it up here, you get some more control and it's a little bit easier to apply pressure when you want more. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to work on getting a little bit darker effect down here at the bottom. So you can apply as much color as you want. You could uh, keep blending until you have a very dark color of red here if you like. But what I am going to do is flip this around and I am going to blend another color of ink into this. So I'm going to get some Calypso Coral ink. I am going to use the same brush from the same color family and I am going to use the same brush. I am just going to get a lot of this ink out on my scrap paper before I switch. So I'll pick up some color from here. I am going to get that excess off down here and I do like to start on the edge and work my way into the project. That way if you do still have excess ink it seems to catch on the side of your paper instead of being a blob right there in the center. So there you can see those colors are already blending together. You can overlap them as much as you want, but you do want to overlap if you're trying to blend different colors into each other. And then let's say I want to add a lighter color of pink over here on the right side. I'm gonna blend this off so it gets real light and faded. And then I could work on my next color. So that's how you use your blending brushes. Once you are done with them for your time of crafting, you may want to clean your brushes, but you may not need to. And that's going to depend on how many brushes you want to have in your collection. So if you want to keep one brush for each color family, such as a blue one, a red one, a green one, one for the yellows, one for the neutrals, then you may not really need to clean them. You may want to do what I showed and just get any of that excess ink out onto some scrap paper, but you may not really need to clean it. But if you are going to just have a set of three that you want to use for all of your projects, you can do that. You can reuse these for different colors as you probably saw on this one. So if that's the case, you would need to clean them. So you have several options for cleaning them. You can use Stampin' Up! Chamois, which is the way I would typically clean my brushes. I have loaned mine to somebody else, all of mine, to somebody else at the moment, so I don't have mine to share. So I'll sh demonstrate the same thing with this microfiber cloth. So if you don't have a chamois or you just want to use a microfiber cloth, you can use it and you just want to rub it around and apply a good amount of pressure to get most of that ink out. I did wet this and squeeze it out before I used it. So that's one way to clean them. You could also run them under water and then let them dry. But keep in mind with if your cloth or your chamois, chamois are very wet, or if you run them under water, you are going to have to let them dry when you first use them. As you saw at the beginning of my video, I thought my brush was dry enough to use it and it wasn't. So you may want to keep extra brushes in your collection for that reason, just to make sure you have enough that are dry to use when you want them. So as you can see, I have applied color labels to my brushes. So I have a red label here, blue, gray, and this is how I'm going to keep track of the colors for, for my brushes. And where I got those labels from are Stampin' Up! ink pads on the bottom. We always have these uh, str sticky strips you can use. One of them is for the front of your ink pad. One of them goes here on the inside so you can tell when you have your pads open what color they are. And then I took half of one of these other strips and just wrapped it around these brushes. So that is how I'll be able to tell them apart after I use them quite a bit. I'm sure I'll also be able to see the colors on the bristles as well. So let's talk about some ways to use these brushes. And I'm going to move my scrap paper at this point. So 
So one of the really common ways to use these, just like with sponges, is to add just a touch of color around the outside of your project. So on this one, I added some early espresso around the edge just to give it a little bit of a shadowed look and set it off from the card base. Another awesome way to use them is with masks or stencils. So here is one of our masks we have right now and I used it. I taped my card to the mask from the back side. So I had some tape here to hold everything together. And then I went over this lightly. I started with yellow and started applying my color. Once I finished with my yellow, I moved on to the orange and the other colors, but that is just an amazing way to use these blending brushes. You can apply full color to a project, such as what I did in this section of this card. I used some large post-it notes to mask off the white part of my card, and then I use the brushes to apply several different colors to fill in all of that space and get that really pretty background. And then I stamped the dragonflies and the flowers over top. You can use these in a lot of other ways too. These are the samples I have for now, but you can apply a die cut to your project with some removable adhesive, blend over it, and then take that die cut back off. There are just so many ways that you can use these brushes and I can't wait to share more of them in some of my future videos. So I think we've done a pretty good job of covering a lot of information about these brushes. The one thing I haven't talked about yet is storage. So I'll share with you how I'm planning on storing mine and it's, it's pretty basic. I am just going to keep mine in a coffee cup on my craft table. I'm sure I will use these quite a bit, so I want to keep them out and accessible. So I looked through my coffee cup collection. This is one that used to be my grandma's, so I thought it would be a wonderful one to keep on my craft table all the time to have a memory of her. But as you can see, they spread themselves out in here, so the bristles aren't gonna be rubbing together. Even if I add another set or two, they will still fit in this co coffee cup just fine. And then what if you want to travel with them? Because I don't really want to travel with my grandma's coffee cup. So I think a pencil case would be perfect. This container I have right here is a little bit smaller than a pencil case. So if you have a regular size pencil case, I think that will be perfect to hold at least two sets of these. You could put one set at this end, the other set at this end, and that will be perfect to travel with them and keep the ink on those bristles from getting on anything else you're traveling with. So thanks for joining in with this video about Stampin' Up's blending brushes. I'm really excited about these coming. I can't wait to add more to my collection to share more projects with you and to see what you all are creating out there with them. So if you would like to see Stampin' Up's new catalog now, and start ordering these new products beginning December 1st. You can do that if you're a member of my Sassy Stampers team, and you will also get a permanent discount on your Stampin' Up! products. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Ordering for regular customers begins January 5th, so that is when you can get these. Thanks for joining in today. You can get more ideas and inspiration on my blog at scrappingstampingandstuff.com. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you again next time.